Or, was that a loud one? Sorry. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to ask Brandon to start us off with prayer this morning. Okay. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another Tuesday, an opportunity for us to be together uh, in person and virtually. We're really grateful for technology that makes that possible. Uh, we ask your blessing on our times today. We thank you for our speaker being here, from RJ Cinema. Looking forward to that. And uh, we pray that you would just be with our club and our efforts in the community, help us to make a difference uh, everywhere that we live, work, and play. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, and then Alan, can you uh, lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. suppose I should also add that our wedding anniversary indeed was two weeks ago, 57. Yes, we'll, we'll get to wedding anniversary. Yes, sir, yeah. 57 years. It's a tribute to um, Gene's patience and my wisdom. Anyway, where are our birthday folks? Just out of the picture over here to the right, there they are. Oh. And so it's your birthday, or so we've been told. And though you seem ageless, you're another year old. On a cake there'll be candles all lighted for you. And everyone is singing, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. you. All right, and then any rotary anniversary, Brandon? Uh, we do have some rotary 
anniversaries. Uh, Linda Fraley celebrated her second rotary anniversary. And uh, Nicole's sixth rotary anniversary is coming up on the 19th. Awesome. Aaron's one year uh, coming up on the 20th. Hey. That's exciting. And then we got, uh, as Peter mentioned, uh, 57 years, right? For you, Peter, 57? That's correct. Wow, I thought I was doing well. Friday's 27 for Krista and I. Ah. Well, you'll get there eventually, one present. I'll catch up with you. Yes, no. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Congratulations on all the anniversaries. Happy birthday. Um, all right. We've also, um, I think, um, seen the last of the uh, golf outing donations trickle in. Um, so I just want to recognize those companies that have um, that have donated uh, in spite of us not having the actual outing. So we really appreciate that. Um, it does help us continue to uh, support the community around us. So uh, People's Bank, uh, Midwestern, uh, Judge James Schreiber, Park National Bank, uh, Randy Perry, Great Oaks, and then I believe Len Dickerson as well. So thank you to all those donors. Um, it's, uh, I know, I think Jennifer had sent out um, thank you notes to everyone. So, um, but if you if you had a contact at any of those locations um, and want to send a personal thank you, we, we do appreciate it. Did we miss anyone? Mary Jane, she's not paying attention. That's all right. No, you didn't. We, we didn't miss anybody. I'm paying awesome. attention. I'm multitasking. No, that's all right. <laughs> All right, um, let's see, another, um, another thing we had going on. Uh, Jennifer, do you want to give us an update on the Christian Health Center donation? Um, we have collected um, 127 boxes of crayons and 156 boxes of pencils. So when I leave here, I will head out to pick up Nicole's and then to Kroger to try to finish it out and then drop them off at the Christian Health Center this morning. Awesome. Thanks for organizing that. And what what is their, I know they're doing the school supply drive, they're collecting probably a list of 10 different items um, and we just picked the crayons and colored pencils. Um, and our goal is to get 200 of each um, in a two week span. I think uh, we did pretty darn well. So, um, and then they're doing the school drive. Are they having a drive-through for everyone? Or I'm what's... not sure how hard they're handling it. I know they're doing 200 backpacks. I don't know if Brandon knows more about it than that. But okay. I know they're doing 200 backpacks. And he said last year they did 400 and uh, three, uh, at least 300 of the 400 went to the school drive. Wow. And awesome. then the rest was split between CME and Kingsburg. <coughs> so. Awesome. Assuming that the majority of the 200 backpacks will probably be silver for the kids. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and speaking of school, I haven't heard um, updates. I'm, I think I heard Mary Jane um, talking with Michael. Um, do you mind giving an, a quick update on what um, it looks like for schools, um, for Batavia schools going back to school? I can only speak to Batavia. Sure. It's every school district is doing their their own thing, if you will. Yep. Um, our plan is still to go back five days, starting the 24th with students. Teachers will be coming back uh, Monday. Okay. And they'll have a weekend to grab it. Um, parents have a choice of two choices, either online or in person. We have about 20% of our student body that have elected to be online. And they will do that the whole first semester. So they can't swap in and out. Um, we're, we've got cards putting up. All the staff will have the appropriate uh, you know, face coverings, either shield, mask, or combination. Um, we've had to do some alterations on um, some of the rooms in terms of desks, moving out non-essential furniture so that we can at least get the three feet. Social distancing and which is aware the government mandated all students and staff will be wearing masks regardless of age unless they have a medical issue or those kinds of things. So uh, the 20% that are online helps us in terms of do the social distancing inside the buildings. 
but that's our current plan. I know the governor is supposed to hear us more about the tools today. Okay. Um, press conference. I think it's more guidance that you know, as you progress, these are the things you need to make sure you're doing if you want to stay in session. Is that twenty percent virtual number? Is that was that higher or lower than expected, or about? Uh, it's running about what the our initial surveys indicated. Okay. So we we surveyed the community has been surveyed several times, at least the school community. So Good. Uh, it's kind of running along. About actually, it's more like uh, 79, 78 percent in in class and then the other the remaining. And we've uh, we moved over the summer to where every student will have a device. So, in, and then we've also have found ways to be able to provide internet access to those that either don't have it or can't afford it. Um, and, and of course, the state is providing some dollars associated with that. Uh, awesome. So, uh, we feel like we have a good plan. I mean, the key is if you need to redo, if you happen to have it. Yeah. Everybody's waiting on the sports, in particular the contact sports right now. So yeah. you know, we'll see how that goes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And Harry, quick update for Great Oaks. So we our teachers started yesterday. Uh, we start Monday on an A B schedule, so they can be here for the whole day. Uh, Monday to Thursday, seniors, Tuesday, Wednesday, so they're in the lab for the day we spend the lab time. We'll do academics for the building. Population down at half yeah. across the board. But like Michael said, uh, I do want to reflect we had a fire EMS class that started two weeks in the March and just graduated 18 weeks later. Had 22 deaths in it. It was six distancing. We did it in a firehouse. We had no COVID, COVID 19 outbreaks. Students or the staff, and yeah. it can be done. You just got to pay attention. Sure. Uh, we're serving the uh, cafeteria, might be our biggest challenge. One campus, we're doing a remote where the students brought to the labs. The other three are doing three different lunch sessions. So our typical cafeteria holds 600, so we're bringing in less than 170 in each. It'll be an interesting year. And each week, we all sit on our in the educational fields, wait to see what the governor's going to tell us we can or can't do. Sure. Uh, we'll see what he does today. Well, to hear this morning, I think you know, the key is just following the protocols. We don't want to be, our goal is we do it right so that we don't have to shut back down or, or, or go to a modify. Yeah. And I know a lot of districts across the state are kind of revisiting their initial plans. Maybe doing a staggered start. Start remote by this day, we'll do part of our students and then we'll be online. Uh, we try there, people are monitoring what's going on in other parts of the country, you know, as they open up. And some places already they've started with kids and then they've had to close since they've had some outbreaks. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I know Georgia was the hot topic. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how you manage it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So then the contact tracing. Yeah. I right. really try yeah. to understand all that. So back funny. to Mike's point, the, the other <laughs> challenge you, uh, that you have, we're, we're doing the first nine weeks to try to provide some experience for learning is hands on learning. You can't, you, can't, you can't build a house uh, virtually when you can. But I mean, <laughs> can't you do that with well? <laughs> there is virtual well. <laughs> 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 But that's the challenge. The other thing is that we learned in the spring that our teachers just aren't prepared for remote delivery. And so over this nine weeks, we give this opportunity for especially our academic teachers in their, their remote days, when the kids have their remote day, but when they're back in the building before lunch, after lunch, we have time where the teachers go to work with the students face to face or mask to mask, is that how I can say it? <laughs> And have those conversations because that's the challenge is when we everybody hears remote, it's difficult for kids to advance uh, remotely. Yeah. So and it's tough for our teachers to be flipped over. So first our first five weeks, the 
really focus on professional development of the teachers. Then, after that nine weeks, October 19th, they started working with the Master Foundation. Everybody, that first semester, I think, is what everybody's looking at to see how it's impacted their lives. I don't know if I'm wrong, but a couple schools have been out of And then 
and I, I have this Thursday. Um, if anyone is available, um, if not, I'll just make a few trips. Not a big deal. But um, well, and then you might also want to check with Marcy because every call I've been on with her, she's asking all kinds of organizations to cover these Thursdays. So, oh, okay. So there's a good chance she's found other people. I'll check with her. I was thinking it was um, primarily the three Rotary clubs. Yeah. There wasn't anybody there to help us, so I don't know that everybody's jumping up. To well, check with Marcy. Yeah. 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 I'll ask Marcy. Yeah. Um, I did share the Google Doc with Marcy, so she has access to that as well. Okay, so hopefully if she's getting, um, you know, signups, either she's directing them to sign up through that link, um, or she's putting their names on there for them. So, um, but yeah, so, um, but I'm doing this Thursday and I'll come back with a report in a couple weeks. Um, but if anyone is free, there are still, I think, Six more weeks, Sheila, available to sign up, if I'm not mistaken. Seth, do you have a van? No, I have an SUV, but. Okay, because you won't be able to fit everything in the SUV, so if you, I'll do a few if trips. you find out you're the only one, let me know. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm um, oh, I'll call um, Marcy, so, and figure that out. And then I'm also going to reach out to the other Rotary Clubs, because it, it was supposed to be kind of a tag team effort uh, between the three of us, so I'll get with them. And, and see where they're at now so they make another announcement it's going to be interesting um seth we have a van this is peter we have a van if it'll help any when do we need to have it where well on um pick up and drop off is on thursday i don't think there. i haven't seen any times um where they have to be picked up by a certain time or delivered by a certain time so i think it's just whenever it's available i know thursday i was planning on doing it either mid-morning or mid-afternoon um we had to be here at 9, before 9.30. They have it sitting out. So. It's sitting out in the sun. And I think they're only open until 12. Good to know. Well, sometimes the information doesn't get passed along correctly. And then when I emailed the person, she was like, can you be here at 9? I'm like, no, you're told 9.30. So it's kind of, okay. you know, it's kind of depending on who you talk to. Because I think it's volunteer. Okay. okay. You, you pick up at the, the Inter Parish Ministries in Amelia, and then you take it to... Beachmont Motel, which is, you know where that is. Oh, I know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> and Leanne is in room 102. Go knock on room 102 and she will come out. And so the, the pickup this week is at River Tree, isn't it? The, the pickup this week is at River Tree in Milford. Oh, I did it. Every other week oh, flip -flops is. Which is going to the Motel Beachmont? Then they Still going to the Motel Beachmont. Okay, so yeah. I'll I'll find that out and find out the hours, and then I'll also update the spreadsheet that I the Google sheet that I sent out with that's, times. That's where they're housing the homeless shelter. Yes. 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 Correct. Yes. Yes. So, um, all right. Well, that's good to know. So, um, before we welcome Rick up front, does anyone else have anything that they want to bring up? We'll have a chance at the end as well. All right, perfect. Well, Rick, if you want to come on up, I think um, Nicole is going to work through uh, the slides for you. Um, and so Rick Welker is with RJ Cinemas and Brewery, which I think opened uh, July 2009. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I always enjoy getting up and talking about my passion, and that's entertaining people, uh, our theater. Uh, we have two locations. There's a Robert James Distillery in Norwood, and we've got the RJ Cinema property at Thelma Gyms in Eastgate. Um, I, my new tagline that I've been using lately is so much more than just the movie theater. And I'll, you know, I'll get a little deeper into that, the logic for that line as we go along here. But you might be aware that there's this little thing called COVID-19 out there now, which is tended to disrupt and interrupt um, indoor entertainment facilities a little bit. And so part of the part of the challenge that I have is trying to figure out how to take a small business that's new, just started in July 2019, and pivot it into something that makes more sense in the light of the economic conditions today. So. If I look like I'm tired, I am. <laughs> <laughs> We've been going at it hard and heavy. 
Uh, we've been trying to be open as much as we can, both to employ our employees, but also to remain relevant in, in the eyes of the consumer. We had a buildup of nine months coming into the shutdown. And we just, we felt like we were getting close to a tipping point when it all shut down. And so uh, the experience that we had between then and now has been magical, really. Uh, I have to say that, you know, when life beams your lemons, try to make lemonade, and that's what we've tried to do. And, and so not only did I want to tell you about what we do, but I also wanted to give you a little bit of a journey, I suppose to brag a little bit, but also if you're going through the same thing we went through, uh, hopefully I can inspire at least one idea for how to pivot your business into something that's, that works in today's in light of today. So Nicole, can we go to the next slide? Um, I'm almost obligated by my partners to talk about what we do. And one thing we do for businesses is we provide an event space. So the Bob Slattery is Robert James. Uh, he and I, Bob Slattery and Bobby Slattery, his son, have 50 West Brewing Company. Bob Slattery and I have Robert James Distillery. Uh, and the two properties we talked about. Can you go to the next slide, please? So we've got multiple entertainment venues, one of which is the 50 West Production Works or Pro Works. It used to be Kahana Beach. It's now where they make the bulk of the beer for 50 West. Uh, they've just opened a, and if you want to talk about an interesting pivot business story, the Burger Bar and the Pro Works building uh, used to be Fazelli Pizza down on Wooster Road. And uh, Pizzelli went away. They were trying to figure out what to do with it. Bob's a real estate guy at, at, at heart. And so he's got this whole group of properties cobbled together down in Wooster. And the Pizzelli became 50 West Burger Bar. So it's, uh, it's been phenomenally successful through COVID. It's, it, I mean, it's one of the things, in my opinion, that, that journey should be taught in business classes in the future because it was a magical, oh my God, what are we gonna to do to incredible success. It was the right product in the right place at the right time. So anyways, ProWorks has the ability to do banquets. They've got an outdoor balcony. They've got the volleyball courts. It's kind of a nice place if you wanna have a beer oriented, um, activity oriented facility. ProWorks is a great one. Can you go to the next slide please, Nicole? Next is across the street, the Brew Pub. It used to be the Heritage Restaurant. They turned it into Brew Pub. It's what they call it, the 50 West. It's got smaller rooms, a little more private, a little more intimate. Um, they also produce beer there still, so it's still an opportunity for a, for a quick and dirty um, beer tour. But uh, it's, it's a very nice facility, and they've got a variety. They'll be opening back up when fall comes and it starts to get cold out the outdoor aspect of Burger Bar will obviously go away. And so they're hoping to be able to transition uh, over to Brew Pub, but nice event space. Next slide, please. Next is our um, our Wags Park. If you want to party hard with the dogs and you know, maybe over, overindulge like this little puppy did, um, it's a neat place. If you, it's also near Wooster Pike on Church Street, just around the corner from the 50 West properties. Uh, it's a nice country club for dogs. And it's, if you wanted to have a, one of the, one of the uh, interesting events they feature at Wags Park is the Chasing Tails thing. It's for singles to bring their dogs there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it is also an event space. They've got a parking lot with tent now. Uh, it was designed to be able to have food trucks come in. There were some issues with that, especially through COVID. And so it's now private event space available for it. Next slide, please. Uh, this next one is our distillery in Norwood. Um, it is a, the back half of the facility is a distillery, an operational functional distillery. And the front part is now called um, Smoke Water Barbecue. We have a third party partner that's working with us to provide the food service there. And we can do uh, catered events for anywhere between 50 and 100 people or, or less as well. Okay, next please. Finally, my little, my little, uh, the 900 pound gorilla that I call home every day is the cinema distillery. We've got the ability to do outside events right now. We've got the ability to do inside events in our tap room. Both of our garage doors open up, so we've got an open air uh, 
tap room building. We're renting private theater space right now for an affordable price, and it has just exploded. It's amazing to me how many people won't go see a movie in an indoor space, but if they can control who's going to be in that indoor space, they're very open to it. Um, it's one of the interesting dynamics, you know, of, of how people are thinking today. So we have the ability to do events. Um, next slide, please. What I really wanted to spend time on, but not much, because I know you've got a busy day, uh, is our little journey. We opened in July 2019, first nine months, saw steady growth. We felt like we were getting there. When we had to close in 2020 and our pivot began in earnest, we had already started in January. Uh, the movie theater business is busy in the holidays and then drops down in January, February, builds back up, peaks through the summer, drops, kids go back to school, and then builds back up into the holiday season. Um, so we had already started introducing some new menu items and things in January, February, when it hit. And so we had to, now we go from you know, where we were to zero. Next slide, please, Nicole. Uh, this is a brief video that if we're able to play it, uh, just gives you a, a quick and dirty tour of RJ Cinema. No sound, Nicole, if you're able to. Sorry, forgot I had muted it. One second. Craft beer. Oh, come on. Nobody's really taken the theater business and combined it with a distillery business. You know, a lot of theaters have a kitchen and have a bar, but nobody's making their own spirits, making their own craft beer. My name is Rick Welker. I'm the GM here at Robert James Cinema Distillery and Tap Room in the Eastgate area. It's very satisfying to me when I see people come through the door. There's this certain amount of astonishment. Wow, this place is incredible. And I happen to agree with you. We're very proud of the look and feel. But I think when folks come in for the first time, they're going to find both a place where they can enjoy a meal, but also a really cool vibe for a tap room. And then, of course, we've got eight screens with over a thousand seats available to show the best movies that are coming out of Hollywood. Jungle Jim Bonominio and Robert James Slattery, Bob Slattery, uh, are two lifelong friends. So when Jungle had this space available, Bob was interested in building out his distillery business and brewery business. And so the two got together and said, let's figure out how to make this work. It's like an R&D lab, right? So that we can test product and get it first run into uh, consumers' mouths and minds and get their feedback. And it allows us to perfect formulas for taste and for recipe before they go to the big production still in Norwood. When a new visitor comes to RJ Cinema, we want them to realize this is not your typical cinema. This has a very cool vibe to it. We're as much a tap room as we are a movie theater lobby. Uh, we want it to be easy to find the tickets. We want it to be quick to get into the movie. But if you want to enjoy dinner and drinks, we're a perfect place for that as well, whether you see a movie or not that evening. So when you come in, uh, we've got menus at all the tables. You place your order at either the concession stand or the bar. We give you a little alert disc, like you might find at a Panera Bread. And when the food is ready in the kitchen, we buzz you and you come over to the kitchen and pick it up and take it either back into the tap room or into the movie theater where we have a table with seats where you can enjoy your meal before or during your movie. I think when people are leaving for the night, they're happy they came. They are feeling like they've been entertained and they had a great meal with great atmosphere to share time in together. And that's really what it was all about for me. It's a certain balance of astonishment and satisfaction. That's, that's meaningful to me. So that's our, that's Robert James, RJ Simmons, distillery in the room in a nutshell of the things that have changed between then and now. As we said, we had a menu at the table. 
we now have to provide service because everybody needs to be seated. If they're, you know, if they're going to get up and walk around in order to the bar to order something, they need to mask up, etc. And so we went to a service model, which was something that we had initially avoided just because we wanted to keep our labor profile as low as we can. But it's that, you know, so many, so many things when you're in a circumstance like this have to change. And you hope that they change for better. And I feel like uh, the, the, the process that we've gone through has been kind of magical, really. It's wearing me out, but uh, we're in a much better spot today than we were then because of the things that we were forced to do that we kind of wanted to do to get there. So before COVID, the movie theater business was changing. Post COVID, it's changing a lot. There's been deals between AMC and Universal. There's been deals between uh, uh, Trolls Universal to Trolls World Tour to premium video on demand. Everybody says, why do I need to go to a movie theater? You know, I can just watch it on my 4K at home. Well, that's fine, but you know, it's really more of an experience. It's really more of a night out. You can watch a movie anywhere anymore. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it on the plane. You can watch a movie anywhere you want. But to have that experience, to have the dinner in a movie, for instance, we felt like we had to come into this business with a new approach. The next economic model demanded it. Uh, if you're just a movie theater right now, you're not doing the, big, the volume that I'm doing. Um, I've, I've actually got our volume today to the same level it was pre-COVID. And we kind of had, before we had a good business, a uh, good movie model, and our restaurant wasn't good. And now we've gotten a good bar restaurant model, and our movie business isn't so good. We hope that when this thing begins to normalize again, that the other side swings back up, and we, we take off from there. But uh, you know, you've got to have multiple reasons to attend. You've got to have the creative programming. Maybe if you're playing, um, you know, if you're playing 1917, if you're playing a war movie, you need to communicate to the veterans associations. If you're playing a church movie, you need to have integrated well with all the churches. You need to have reasons to say, let's go entertain here at, at this place. One more time, please. Next slide. So. We demanded a pay with the theaters go dark, bars and restaurants were ordered to close, social distancing is going to happen in the future, and the staff was furloughed to drop to zero. So I've got no staff, I've got no revenue, and I've got a landlord that still wants his rent, drum that still wants paid for the dumpsters, Cincinnati Bell that still wants paid for the Wi-Fi, and all the stuff that we've all gone through. You can see in the background here, we've roped off every other row of seating. So when you sit in one of the theaters, nobody will be in the row behind you. Nobody will be in the row in front of you. And the software is set up to if you get seats four and five, nobody will be able to buy two and three, but we'll be able to buy six and seven. So there's two seats on either side. Of, that takes us to about a 30% capacity. The truth be told, and then more in the movie theater industry, if you've got a lot of seats like we do, 30% capacity is fine. You know, we can operate. We like to be able to get up to 60%. But if you can if you can sell out a lot of shows at 30%, you'll you'll be okay today. Uh, next slide, please. So what we did, we said, okay, what do we have? First of all, what's our unique selling proposition? We've got the movies and we can get old movies right now. There's no content to get, right? You can't, you know, worldwide, there's no movies coming out. The first movie that's coming out is going to be Russell Crowe's movie called Unhinged from Solstice Studios. And it'll, we'll, we'll be playing that in, uh, August 21st. And that's the first movie that's come out since late March. It's, well, unless you've gone, unless you've considered the movies that were released to premium video on demand. So we've got a distillery and brewery. That's an asset. We've got a very nice kitchen. We can be a very good restaurant. We've got a great ambiance. The open air tap room, the fact that we wanted to be like a brewery, put the garage doors in, was a godsend. So now we have indoor seating with birds flying. We don't really have birds, but both sides of the room are open. There's a nice fresh breeze going through, and that's really helped raise a confidence level with our customers that are coming in. Uh, we told Jungle, hey, uh, well, first of all, the liquor department, the governor said, go out on the sidewalks, go out in the streets, extend your footprint outside beyond your legal footprint, and we've done that. So we're using free outdoor patio spaces, which also has been a godsend. The private theater rentals has just been crazy. I've booked 65 private theater rentals over the, the course of eight weeks, um, and the leads are still coming in. I put one post on Facebook, never boosted it. It, would, it went completely viral. I mean, you know, in a local sense, it had 
last I looked was a few weeks ago, and it was 50,000 views, like 400 shares, crazy traffic. And of course, special events, anything, uh, uh, you know, I've got a wedding rehearsal this week, I've got a um, birthday party this week, so people are coming in and wanting to find places that are safe and available that they can come and, and have an event with. So uh, innovation becomes key at that point. I wanted to I wanted to preserve the night of date night. That's how this whole slippery slope for me started. I'll get into that in a second. But I want to leverage the items we have in inventory, build relationships, build my awareness, and we're going to do that through continuous product development. Next slide, please, Nicole. So, uh, as you can see from this picture, during the shutdown, we managed to cook a batch of popcorn here and there. Uh, date night was one of the things that I was doing successfully. I you can't come here for date night anymore. We have to shut down. You have to watch a movie for date night at home. And so if we want to help you a little bit, make that at home movie experience be just a little bit more like the real thing. So just come by the rest, come by the theater, pull up to our front door, and we will hand you for free a bucket of freshly popped movie theater popcorn. We heard of somebody selling movie theater popcorn doing well, and I said, you know, that's great. I want to give it away. I need to build my awareness. I need to build my relationships in the community. So I'm just going to give it away. We wound up selling big bags like these for $8 a piece. One company came in and said, hey, can we buy 400 of those from you, please? Uh, yes, I will let you. <laughs> so uh, during the course of the stay at home orders, the month of April, we, the first night was March 30th, and I think we ended it sometime May 15th, 16th, something like that. We gave away three thousand buckets of free movie theater popcorn. Um, my team and I came in, we were all on furlough, none of us got paid. There might have been some, you know, liquor on the side, I don't know. But uh, we ran to the cars. People saw us working hard. Um, we had a whole lot of popcorn in stock and we had a whole lot of liquor at the distillery in stock between the two locations. So we said, okay, here's what we've got. What can we do with that? Next slide, please, Nicole. So uh, during our little at-home nights, I know what this means. You may, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, but that's a line of cars from RJ Cinema, if you know where it is, all the way down past Jungle Gyms, all the way down to Crossroads. And that line was like that. And it was going fast, by the way. We were working hard, running back and forth. That line would last for an hour and a half when we did this free popcorn thing. So people would drive by Jungle Gyms on Eastgate Boulevard and say, what's that line about? Oh, there's a movie theater there. No kidding. Um, we had people posting online, you know, just got my popcorn for the weekend. I asked permission to use this for my marketing. I thought, oh, it's, I can't, I can't stay to shop that day. That's fantastic. So we, we did really well. I, the, the benefit that we gained from this little free popcorn exercise was huge. Next slide, please. Next was to build awareness. Inside each one of those 3,000 bags, we had a kickback coupon. We had a, the, the, the right-hand side talks about what we do. The left-hand side says, thank you. And by the way, come see a movie with us on us. So we gave out, I have no idea how many I printed, but there was one in each one of those 3,000. And I printed a lot more beyond those as well. Next slide, please. Um, this is an example of, we advertise on Facebook. I put up a post. And if the post caught a little bit of traction, I boost it. And if you're familiar with that, it doesn't cost that much. I, I've spent maybe, you know, the popcorn cost me about $1,500, and I probably spent about $1,500 on Facebook advertising. This post, I would have boosted for, you know, maybe 80 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. We said free movie theater popcorn. We put up pictures of what we were doing. That's a 58,000 people reached. Uh, there was, um, 452 shares of this. And again, I'm not talking about worldwide. It's only our little corner of the world out here, right? But uh, organically, we had about 30,000, a little over 30,000 reach on that. We paid for just about 26,000 reach. Um, the engagement was phenomenal. And as a result, those lines were really long. And people said, I had no idea there was a movie theater there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, what have we done since now and then? I didn't want to go too long, so I, I, I just will suffice to say, we've added live entertainment. Uh, we've got karaoke on Friday. We've got live entertainment on Saturday. 
We've introduced new products like a smoked old fashioned. It's really good, by the way. Um, if you're if you're into old fashions, you can you like campfires in the, in the fall. You got to try one of these. But I had these bottles in stock. I went to a restaurant. I saw a smoked old fashioned being made. I'm like, oh my god, that's fantastic! So within a day, we had figured out the materials to use and. I had ordered the stuff from Amazon.com that I needed, and we were in the smoked uh, old-fashioned business within the weekend. Our the third coupon, the third picture there is Sunday brunch. We it turns out that women like mimosas. Who knew? Um, we put up this little mini mimosa plate, and that post went viral immediately. It was crazy how fast that one caught traction. So now we're doing mini mimosa flights for our Sunday brunch. We added waffles. We added omelets. Um, we're this, this slide here is talking about um, a new drink convention that we're doing at the third party. Um, it's a high proof, ready to drink cocktail called Mixed Cocktails. Uh, it's just one of the many things we've done since then. We've added a lot of new menu items. People were coming in buying our liquor bottles like it was their job. And we said, well, you know, we want them to have a, a real cocktail at home. So we made a couple of our most popular drinks, the rum punch. And our blackberry sour, we made the mixed bottles again using Avery labels and the, uh, the little 375 bottles that I had in stock. Um, and we made these drink mixes, and we've sold a ton of those to go along with the liquor bottles. So, all that said, in a real brief presentation, I just wanted to tell you what one company in your, in your community has done to try to figure out this crazy COVID thing. It shut us down. And we've managed to find a way to, you know, fish for the fish that's good, or give the dogs dog food, however you want to say it. We found what people in our community were looking for, and we were able to address it successfully. So that's been our journey since since March. And I want to go take a nap now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions? That's the end. Yes. Did you get any government subsidy at all? To we did. We applied for and received PPP. We're kind of a complicated company. We in a box lottery, he's a serial entrepreneur. So everything was done under the 50 West slats of, uh, he had two PPP loans. One was for his big company and the other was for the cobbler and all the smaller companies. So it's not like we did it individually, but PPP allowed me to bring my staff back when we were able to reopen. And you know we overstaffed to figure out what we needed to do. So it was very helpful, it was critical for us. We couldn't have done it without him. I think it's a thing that can really attribute capitalism ingenuity to the main people. Yeah, it, it's been a you know, real <laughs> you know, Just keep punching. That's it. Uh, it's very fun. Other questions? Are you, you going to continue to do the um, the rentals that you've been doing for movie theaters? Just for, I mean, I know that you did them before, but like, so I work with a guy who's part of the Tama County Board of Developmental Facilities, and we haven't done any in person activities. Yeah. We, I saw your, uh, we're hoping to do that in September. I saw your information pass through someone's Facebook page and sent it to the activity coordinator in our department and said, we have to do this because I think people, as you said, are sitting at home, especially people that have disabilities that don't drive and they're at someone else's mercy and they've been locked in this residential setting for all this time. Um, as soon as we can do some activities, we'd love to come down and do that. So I may get with you personally. This is how we get a little more fun from that. So, first of all, yes, we're going to continue to do it. There's a funny story about it that I want to tell. Second, uh, there's a group that's coming in, and they're, they've got a couple of people that are, you know, in at risk. And so they're very, very concerned about keeping away from others. So we've arranged with that group. Most of the groups, I, I, I joke, if you break down the population of three, there's this size that's in the bubble of being coming out. Nothing we will do about it. They're stay at home. They're done. Little group of, you know, I'll, I'll come out, but only if they're sick. And the third group, you know, heck with all this, um, I won't get into the political side of it, but let's just say that they're not buying. <laughs> and they're coming out. So um, as we begin to extend into that middle third and the, the final third, ultimately, um, we're making accommodations for people that come into our theater next doors. So they literally open their car to the theater where they're with their friends. I prefer not to do that too often, but you know, for when it's needed, it's, we have it. So, movie theater business is crazy. I have no idea. Um, I've, I've been in, I've been, I managed Reach Magazine for 20 years. 
with Bob to uh, before I got into this opportunity. And uh, so I'm learning with Wendy Theater industry. I, I broke the culture because he's okay. Hey, look, he's coming out here. You can't do what you're doing anymore. I'm like, what are you talking about? We, uh, we reduce our clip from seven days to five days, and we don't have no movies. So we, we are playing classics right now Ghostbusters, Animal House, Jurassic Park, Jaws. So we're playing all these older movies. And I don't care. You know, there's $6 tickets. Pay for it, don't pay for it. I don't care. Just come and have a beer. Is my, my is my. If you join our free membership club, you can get movies for free. If you don't, then you pay six dollars a shot if you would. So um, he says you can't, you got to be open seven days a week and you can't do the discount tickets anymore. All the tickets have to be normal prices again, or you can't get any movies. So I said to myself, Well, I've joined a little bit of success right now. So my answer to you is no, I'll pass you more movies. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, these people haven't given us content for how long now? They haven't helped us in any way financially. They're, you know, no. The answer is no. I'm not going to do it. So he calls back an hour later. He's okay. They kind of softened their position. <laughs> <laughs> they said, yeah, you can go ahead and stay over the five days a week. You know, go ahead and do those other movies too. And you can still have our content. So I think there's a lot of folks in our position that are pushing back and saying, not going to impose uh, you're not going to impose the old rules in a new economy. So, but to your bit, answer your question, I'm going to continue to do as long as it makes good financial sense. Oh yeah. yeah. Other questions? We're able to do that. Anybody at home? I really appreciate you having me here and thanks for the time, Gary. And Rick, we do have a uh, parting gift for you. Oh, uh, thank you. Just thank you for coming there. Let us know what you're doing. Not a question, but a comment. It seems that you have found a way to improve the quality of many movies by offering a couple of drinks along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, even that would be better than here. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Rick. I appreciate that. I've been a dozen times and I've not seen the movie once, so it is a great restaurant slash bar. Um, all right. Uh, does anyone have anything else before we wrap up? It's 831, it looks like. So, all right, perfect. Our next meeting is on August 25th, two weeks from today, 7.30 a.m. Um, Sheila, who are we going to be hearing from? I forget. We have Adele Evans from Batavia Township presenting. Perfect. Thank you. So Adele will be here, and then we'll also have Susan Wilkins. So uh, let's finish off with the uh, four-way test. All right, are the things we think, say, or do? First is the truth. Second is fair, all concerned. Third, we'll build good will and better friendships. 